I believe now that stuttering was a gift I was given. It's not a gift I would give to anybody else. It's not a gift I would wish on anybody else. It was a horrible, horrid, torturous childhood I had. But because of the stuttering, because I was able to find other ways of realizing who I was, what I was, my potential, that's why I'm here now. That's why I am who, who, who I am. When I finally learned the techniques to speak fluently when I wanted to, and I thought, this is incredible, I can now join the normal world. I was a senior in college. I thought, this is great. I could talk to any girl. I could finally ask a girl out on a date. I could stutter, but they don't know I stutter. I could be completely a fluent stutterer. And within a month or two, I realized that the normal world was incredibly boring. Most people weren't talking about anything. Most people were, weren't thinking very, very deep thoughts. I'm not saying I was better than them. I, I didn't think that at all. I still thought I was a broken person who could now be. But I wanted so much more now. I'd spent so much of my life striving to be better, to be best, to be more than people saw me. Now the normal world wasn't, wasn't good enough for me. Hi, I'm Alan Rabinowitz. I'm the CEO of Panthera. I've been a dedicated wildlife conservationist for over 30 years. I've set One up the world's the largest and first jaguar preserve, and I set up the world's largest tiger reserve. cats are my passion. Jaguars in particular have this very the reason I ended up working on big animals had nothing to do with them being just big. It was that I realized if I'm going to be on a mission to save all the animals, that I had to go after the big ones, knowing that by saving the world's big cats, we're going after huge chunks of land and habitat and saving large expanses of other wildlife and other wild lands. So what if there were no more tigers and were no more jaguars, except maybe some in zoos or captivities? So what? Is the world really going to be a worse place? Well, unfortunately, the answer is yes, in a very real way. Let, let's totally put aside the aesthetics of it and that we will be permanently losing some of the true beauty and wildness of our planet. Let's put even that aside. Just health-wise, a lot of people now are being made more and more aware of what's called emerging diseases or re-emerging diseases. West Nile virus, SARS, Ebola, HIV, Lyme disease. All of these diseases are called zoonotic, meaning that there's an animal involved in the transfer of this disease. That animal is not helping the disease it's actually helping keep the disease from us. So, so a good example is Lyme's disease in the Northeast, which are borne by ticks. And they're carried by deer and small mammals and rodents. Lyme disease has been around for a very, very long time. But it's more out of control now than it ever was in the past. And a big reason for that is because the deer are more out of control. The thing that carry the carriers are now not at natural densities. They're way over. And they're not at natural densities because their predators, mountain lions and wolves, which used to be in the Northeast, are gone. Well, guess what? That's a major factor in not only the maintenance, but the re-emergence almost to epidemic proportions of Lyme disease. Because those animals need to be kept in the natural balance. And then Lyme disease is kept in the natural balance. The diseases which are now getting more and more pre prevalent into the human populations and taking off, and which we're more fearful of, very, very few of those are emerging as brand new diseases, swine flu. They're, they're diseases which have been in nature for a very long time. But, but there's been a firewall, and that firewall has been nature. When the natural processes get destroyed, then everything is out of balance, and those diseases can jump over into the human population. So there is a very, very real cost in terms of serious human health issues when we lose our top predators 
when we start cutting down too much forest, because you don't destroy, you destroy the forest. You're not destroying the diseases. You're not destroying the viruses and bacteria. They're going to be there. You're just taking away the firewall. So is there a really solid reason for our own selfish benefit to try to keep the wild and keep the, the big cats and keep the top predators? Absolutely. And we better learn that sooner rather than later.